Hello, continuing on our series in 1 Corinthians. We're going to be in chapter 4 today. Um, this is such a, an awesome teaching. I, I love, uh, I really loved um, studying this, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We're just going to get right into it. Um, the title of this teaching is My Beloved Sons. Um, verse 1 here, chapter 4. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. And this is Paul speaking, and he says, look, we, the ministers of Christ, we've all been called to this as Christians. And he says that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. And because of this, we need to be found faithful, that we are not on again, off again, that we just need to continue and we need to abide in the word and, the, and abide in truth and to continue uh, our ministering to others. But he says, and he says, but he goes, I don't judge myself whether I'm found faithful or not, or, or even you. And he says, and whenever men speak to me, I don't put weight in their words. I, it's very small amount, he says. He says, of the very small thing that I should be judged of you. He says, I don't put much weight into it. He says, because it is the Lord there in verse four that judgeth me. There, uh, verse five, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. And so Paul is, is, um, He's encouraging them here with reminding them that the Lord is going to come. And that he says, and, and he says, don't judge anything before the time. Just let the Lord, he's the judge. And let, he's going to come back and let him decide whether we have be found faithful or not. Verse six, and these things, brethren, I have in a figure transformed in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. And so he, he, he and Apollos are off ministering somewhere else. This is Paul and Apollos. And, and so he is reminding the people that they are not to be thinking of men too highly and lifting up another man over another so that uh, that they are equal you are all uh christians and that the spirit of god is inside of you and we, we should all be ministering uh for christ and that you should not be elevating one christian above another verse seven for who maketh thee to defer from another and what hast thou that thou didst not receive now, if thou didst receive it, what dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? And so Paul is saying to them, do you, is there anything that you don't have that you, that you need? He says, you have the spirit of the living God inside of you. That's what he's reminding them. He says this, it that he's speaking about, he says, now, if thou didst receive it, this, this power, the spirit of God, this power from on high that these people have received. And he says, and why are you glorying like you haven't received it? He said, he said, the reason that you have this wisdom and this power and the Lord is working is because it's the Lord working through you. It is not of yourselves. He says, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't understand why you are lifting other brethren ab above another and that you're because he, he, what you're being elevated in is the power of the Lord. That's not even of yourselves. So this is the power of the, of the living God. And don't be lifting up one brethren above another. Verse 8. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign. That we also might reign with you. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men we are fools for christ's sake but ye are wise in christ we are weak but ye are strong ye are honorable 
but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger. This is speaking of him and Apollos. We both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. We don't have clothes. We don't have food. We don't have a house. And he says, he says to this present hour, we are despised. He says, we are weak and it's for Christ's sake. He says, but you are back there with the church of Corinth and you are living like kings. But you, but in this, it, it, he says, you are being puffed up in it. You're lifting other people up above another. Let's go on to read here. And late, and he says, this is speaking of his, his condition and him and Apollos. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. So they are uh, suffering persecution and being reviled. And these people are saying things and doing things to them. And look, look at verse 13. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are of the offscoring of all things unto this day. So you know what he's saying here? He's like, we're being treated like pigs. We are the offscoring of this world, the filth of this world. They are treating us like animals. We are being reviled, and we and we bless them. We're being persecuted, and we just suffer. Paul knows, Paul and Apollos know that they are where they should be. This is the New Testament church, and it's a new movement that's coming in, and they're gone out to minister to people and to spread the gospel in the world. And therefore, his ministry, him and Apollos and those early Christians, we are living to this day in a great movement of Christianity and have been. Uh, be, in great part because of this ministry that began at this time, this early New Testament church. But he's not uh, living as kings, uh, him and Apollo says these other people are. But let's go on to read here and, and see why he's sending this letter about this, about this situation, about how they're living. He says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. So he is treating them like his children and trying to nurture them. This is what is so beautiful about Paul. And when he is writing them, he he's trying to correct them, but he's he's not looking to shame them. Now, here's one of the things that I think that Paul knew. Knowing that these people were puffed up, these ministers of, of uh, these people that were being elevated and being treated like kings because these the the people were um, lifting up certain Christians above others. And I think when Paul even writes this, he has a spirit of meekness. You hear it in the writings as he's trying to correct them. He says, I'm not trying to shame you, but I, as my beloved sons, I warn you. So I think Paul knew how he must speak to these people that were walking around puffed up. They were all real proud, a bunch of these people that were leading God's people at this time, they were they were really being so elevated. They were treated like kings. And Paul knew, I need to correct them about this. He's, but he knew it, he had wisdom to know he had to do it a certain way. So he says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, ye have, ye have, yet have ye not many fathers for in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Paul's saying, you've got a lot of counselors. you got a lot of people there. The, a lot of these spiritual leaders that are there to instruct you. And, and he says, 10,000 instructors. You might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. So somebody that's really trying to correct them. See, that's what Paul is saying. He said, you don't have somebody correcting you, but you need this. You need somebody that's nurturing like a father that's there to to catch things that are just not quite right and to try to lead you and guide you in the correct way from the point of where you are. He says, for in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So he's treating them like his children, like he is nurturing like a father. And look here in verse 13, uh, 17. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. So Paul is saying, I've gone out teaching everywhere in every church. And Timothy's been with me, Timotheus. And, and he is going to come back to you. I'm sending him back with this letter. 
And when he brings it, I want you to uh, listen to him uh, because he is going to teach you in the way that I have been teaching. And he says, he reminds them here in verse 17, For this cause have I sent unto you, Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord. Tim Timothy has been found faithful, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. He's like, you're so proud, I don't even want to, I don't even want to come to you. But I will come to you shortly. If the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. He says, you know what? He says, I'm, I'm going to come to you and I am going to come shortly. And he says, if Lord willing. And he says, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to know your speech. I'm not going to partake in this puffing up and being elevated. And I'm not going to let you treat me this way. I'm not going to let you lift me up like a king. He says, but I, but in power, we will commune together in the spirit of the Lord. And he says, for the kingdom of God, in verse 20, is not in word, but in power. Right? The spirit of God that's inside of him. He said, it's not about the words that you're saying anyway. It's the power that dwelleth inside of you. The spirit of God that's inside of you that we will connect on. And I l love the closing um verse here in 21 verse 21 he says what will ye so he's asked him a question what would what what would you like shall i come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness so paul is asking them this is his place of humility he's not saying you know straighten up boys and 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 you know do this and that and this is what you should be doing he's he's saying I'm asking you, how do you want me to come to you? Do you do you need me to come with a rod of correction? Do you need me to come to to correct you as a church? Because Paul is um, is highly regarded among the people as well, and uh, looked at um, very highly. But he doesn't see himself as such. But he knows that's how the people view him, and so he knows that if he comes back and he and he make he basically can shame these people that have been lifting themselves up and being puffed up and being proud um, and elevating themselves up above others like they're better than. He says, I could come and shame you. How would you want me to come though? He says, you want me to come with Rod or do you want me to come and in a, in a spirit of meekness and love? He, you know, and so he says, that's up to you all. You need, you need to get this straightened out. And so it's beautiful how nurturing he is um, and how he, he is, you know, like, like a father to these people, um, treating them like, like sons and correcting, correcting them in a, in a way of love. And that's what he's trying to also teach them. And he had been ministering to people that um and he he even said there in one of those verses where he says you know i would that you be like me you know that you're willing to serve people that are even treating you terribly and poorly and treating you like a pig he says i would that you would be this way because this is christ this is the spirit of christ who is a servant and and uh full of love meekness mercy and this is how we should be ministering to each other so the lesson for us here it can be multifaceted, and and the, the Lord will will teach you uh, through that word, through that truth, um, something that maybe you needed from it. Maybe you are elevating people in your church above others, and so you look at some people like they're not much, and then you look at other people like they're really something, and that you will be just thrilled to death to go and do 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 for some people. Uh, while treating others in a different way. Um, this can this can be a way that the Lord uses these teachings in, uh, of Paul, how he at this time was having to correct this New Testament church. That's what we are. We're the New Testament church. They were the early New Testament church where we still deal with these issues today. And God's eternal word is perfect for us all. And what a way that we can be 
uh, corrected and be mindful of um, how we view ourselves, right? And how we view others and not getting to a place, excuse me, of pride <clears throat> and not elevating ourselves and other people up above another. Uh, this is often done because we look at the actions and the works of people and we think <clears throat> that they're maybe just not as important or maybe they, um, we don't agree with what they're doing or how they're living. But uh, none of us can say that we are living 100% 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the way that Christ would want us to. And yet he still has uh, mercy for us and love and forgiveness for us. And he, and he still knows of the power that dwells inside of us that can be used to bless this world at any time. That spirit of God. It's the power. So even though these people were full of pride, I love how Paul mentions there, he says, but I come to you in the power. And he's speaking about that spirit of the living God inside of these people. And he says, and that's where we can make our connections, that, that power. And so I hope you've enjoyed this teaching. Um, and, and hope it's been a blessing to you. And if you would like to see some of the other teachings in 1 Corinthians, they are all posted on YouTube as well. Of um, 1 Corinthians, we're going through the whole book. And those have been posted in order by day, um, daily, Monday through Friday. Uh, we post those um, new teachings, so I hope that you're able to take a look at those. We also have live in-person teachings for women at um, Kingdom Life Church in Sullivanburg um, every third Saturday uh, at 9 a.m. You're welcome to join those. We'd love to have you. And just contact us through our Facebook page, uh, Amazing Grace Women's Retreat, to, to see when those are. Thank you all.